After a successful run at La Jolla Playhouse, a new stage adaptation of the Disney animated film, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, will play Paper Mill Playhouse March 4th to April 5th. We're here at rehearsal to talk to the creators and stars. So like 20 years ago, you wrote this The Hunchback of Notre Dame movie, right? And now look, it's finally on stage in the U.S. Are you excited? I'm really excited. Um, I think this is such a wonderful adaptation of it, and it's so beautifully staged and designed. It's an amazing story, amazing bunch of creators, and the fusion of the novel and the animated film to create this whole new work is really extraordinary. Now, I've been waiting for it for years. When I first saw the movie, uh, when it came out, I thought, wow, that, that needs to be a stage production. Oh my god, I'm here with Esmeralda. How does it feel to be Esmeralda? Uh, incredible. I always wanted to be a Disney princess, and now I kind of am one, so... <laughs> Fans of the animated movie, if they walked in, they would probably be surprised by the look and the tone of it. It's, it's definitely darker, and it has its own... It lives in its own sort of theatrical world, doesn't it? Uh, we have tried to do that. You know, we've tried to go back more to the tone of the novel. It's not like we're putting the movie up on on, on stage, you know. It, this is something completely different. It's the basic story we know. I mean, you're sort of torn between this hunchback, cute hunchback guy with a great personality and then the prince, the Disney prince. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I think she, she truly loves both of them, but just in different ways, you know. Quasimodo is such a great guy and, like, just has this childlike innocence and beauty to him. And then, of course, Phoebus is, like, hunky and, like, perfect so <laughs> this is a really interesting role because you're actually not like buried under prosthetics they're not trying to make you look like the guy in the movie so talk about the vision a little bit well Scott has always been very very um, clear about his vision of wanting to sort of remove as many layers between what's on stage in the audience as, as possible and so uh, we're approaching it from a, a, a real sort of medieval way and that we're not using anything that you wouldn't have used in 1482. So we asked the audience to use their imagination to be a participant in the event. But Michael specifically has no prosthetics and simply achieved through acting and a little bit of makeup which he applies on stage before your eyes how he becomes the Hunchback of Notre Dame. You know, the DNA of it is still what we did originally with the animated. That's, that's sort of the soil that it comes from, but there's so many new you know, dramaturgical directions that's going in. What about the, the score? It's actually a really complete score. It's a, they took songs I know that weren't used in the movie, and then there's an onstage choir. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, I, I love it. I, I, my guilty little secret is I listen to it when I'm not working, and that tells you something. It's the most exciting and rewarding acting piece I've, I've ever had the chance to perform. It's a big score, and as you say, there's an onstage choir. At the same time, it's an intimate story about these four characters. This is not even a score. It's almost like a Mencken's like Requiem. You know, it's, we have this 32-person choir singing Latin throughout the entire show, and it's it's a, it's a stirring kind of choral masterpiece. Yeah, this music, I mean, I get goosebumps every time I hear it. It's just such a lush, incredible, like, soaring score that I don't know how anyone could not like it. This is really a new piece, and they should not come, you know, hoping for a nostalgic trip down, you know, 1996 lane. I think we're trying to stick a little more to the Hugo novel. It's a little darker, it's a little dirtier, very realistic. We're, we're kind of going a little more realistic even than we did in La Jolla. Back then, things were not clean. It was dirty, it was hard, it was cold, you know, it was a, a tough time, and I think we're trying to portray that. It's not the bad news bears where everybody, you know, triumphs in the end and they win the, the game and everybody lives happily ever after. That's not the nature of this story nor the nature of this character, but there's definitely um, growth and love and, um, and learning and things that, um, you know, we hope for in our lives.